This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instructions that came with your product, SNC Instruction Sheet 451-500. You can download this instruction sheet at snc.com. Fault tamer fuse limiters operate at high voltage. Failure to observe these precautions will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from your company's operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, follow your company's operating procedures and rules. Fault Tamer Fuse Limiters combines the functionality of a conventional expulsion fuse cutout and a backup current limiting fuse in one powerful, easy to install package for the protection of new or existing overhead pull top transformers through 25 kilovolts. This video will demonstrate fusing and installation of a fault tamer fuse limiter into a type XS fuse cutout mounting. Warning, to better protect against damage during handling, do not remove the fault tamer fuse limiter from the original packaging until ready to install in service. Energizing damaged units may cause personal injury, fire, equipment or property damage. Complete the following steps to install a new fault tamer fuse limiter. Step one, unscrew the fuse tube cap from the fuse tube and remove the spring and cable assembly. Step two, screw a new fuse cartridge into the lower end of the spring and cable assembly. Hand tighten until the thread bottoms out. Step three, Pull through the red beaded plastic pull tab until the large bead at the end of the pull tab engages with the end of the cartridge. Then, insert the entire assembly into the fuse tube. Screw the fuse tube cap on the fuse tube upper ferrule and tighten securely with pliers. Step 4. Carefully pull on the red beaded plastic pull tab to pull the fuse cartridge through the fuse tube against spring tension until the contact fingers expand into the ring contact on the fuse tube. Avoid jerking and excessive over travel. Slowly release the red beaded pull tab, permitting the contact fingers to rest on the ring contact. Remove the red beaded pull tab. Notice, do not break off the red beaded plastic pull tab. The contact fingers may separate from the ring contact, allowing the fuse cartridge to pull back into the fuse tube and requiring the fuse cartridge to be installed again. The plastic pull tab should be discarded after removal. Step five, immediately prior to installation, check the limiter to assure no damage occurred during shipping. Visually inspect the unit with the trunnion removed to assure no cracks or other visible damage is present. Check continuity to assure the internal limiter components were not damaged during shipping. Warning, check the backup limiter for damage during shipping. Failure to check the backup limiter for shipping damage can result in a damaged backup limiter being placed into service. This can cause personal injury, air or equipment or property damage. Step six. Align the keys on the fuse tube with the notches in the exhaust control section of the backup limiter. Insert the fuse tube into the exhaust control section and hand tighten the collar nut. Warning, the alignment keys in the fuse tube and the notches in the exhaust control section of the backup limiter are intended to guard against inadvertent use of fuse tubes applicable to one system voltage with backup limiters applicable to a different system voltage. Do not defeat the alignment keys or notches or force together a fuse tube with a backup limiter it is not designed to work with. Misapplying fault tamer fuse limiter components can result in arcing, fire, equipment damage, serious injury, or death. Step seven, attach the trunnion to the threaded stud on the backup limiter with the lock washer and 5 16 to 18 hex nut, which is provided. or over-insulated fault tamer fuse limiters with extension adapter. Remove the trunnion from the backup limiter if installed. Save the hardware. 
Attach the extension adapter to the threaded stud on the backup limiter with the lock washer and 5 16th, 18th hex nut provided. Then attach the trunnion to the extension adapter with the hardware provided. Notice, do not over tighten the 5 16th to 18th hex nut to more than 10 foot pounds. Damage to the backup limiter may result if the hex nut is over tightened. To refuse a fault tamer fuse limiter, follow these steps. Step 1 When a fault tamer fuse limiter operates, it swings to the open position. Remove it from the mounting using a universal pole and a suitable fuse handling fitting such as an SNC talon handling tool or a distribution prong. Caution, as with any current limiting fuse, when a backup limiter operates, it can become hot enough to cause burns. Wear gloves and handle the fault tamer fuse limiter by the fuse tube to avoid possible burn injury. Step two, unscrew the collar nut and remove the fuse tube from the backup limiter. Step three, determine whether the backup limiter has operated by checking its continuity. Touch one lead of the continuity tester to the trunnion and the other to the button contact inside the exhaust control device. The continuity test must be performed as part of the refusing procedure after every fault tamer fuse limiter operation. Warning, failure to check the backup limiter for continuity can return a limiter to service that is already operated. This can result in personal injury, fire, equipment, or property damage. If the backup limiter does not have continuity, remove the trunnion so it can be reused, and then discard the backup limiter. If the backup limiter does have continuity, it can be reused, but first, remove any debris that might be inside the exhaust control section of the backup limiter. Warning. Failure to remove debris from inside the exhaust control section can prevent full travel of the fuse cartridge during a subsequent fault clearing operation. This can result in arcing, fire, equipment damage, serious injury, or death. Do not remove the screen or copper shot at the bottom of the exhaust control section. Doing so can result in serious injury or death during a subsequent fault clearing operation. Step four. Unscrew the fuse tube cap from the fuse tube and remove the spring and cable assembly. Unscrew the upper terminal of the blown fuse cartridge from the spring and cable assembly and discard. If the spring and cable assembly is damaged, install a new assembly. Step five, visually inspect the fuse tube bore and if required, remove any debris. Step six, Visually inspect the fuse tube for cracks or other visible damage. Fuse tubes with damage should be replaced. Step seven, visually inspect the contact clip on the fuse tube for damage or erosion. Fuse tubes with contact clip damage or erosion should be replaced. Warning, a fault tamer fuse tube with contact clip erosion or damage should not be returned to service. Doing so may cause personal injury fire or equipment or property damage. Step eight, push the upper ferrule down until it reaches a positive stop to verify full travel of the upper ferrule and the latching mechanism. Continue with steps two through seven of the fusing section. To install a fault tamer fuse limiter, follow these steps. Step one, insert the curled prong of a talon handling tool or a distribution prong into the opening of the lifting eye. Step two, guide the fault tamer fuse limiter into the hinge of the mounting. Then disengage the distribution prong. If a talon tool is used, rotate the universal pole counterclockwise 180 degrees to disengage. Step three, insert the straight prong on the talon handling tool or a distribution prong in the pull ring of the fuse tube and swing the fault tamer fuse limiter to within approximately 45 degrees of the fully closed position. Then, while looking away, drive the fault tamer fuse limiter to the closed position using a vigorous thrust. Carefully disengage the prong from the pull ring, taking care to avoid pulling the fault tamer fuse limiter open. Warning. 
Do not use the talon handling tool curled prong to close a fault tamer fuse limiter. Use of the talon handling tool curled prong to close a fault tamer fuse limiter can prevent full closure, resulting in arcing, equipment damage, fire, serious injury, or death. The fault tamer fuse limiter can be opened under load using a portable load brake tool such as Loadbuster the SNC load brake tool. For more information, see our video on operating the Loadbuster load brake tool. We hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, visit our website at snc.com.